All right, welcome back. In this video, we are combining friction with moments to solve this 2D statics problem about a guy pulling on a vending machine. So if you're pulling on a vending machine, there's a couple things that could happen. It could tip over and land on you. It could slide on the floor towards you. Or if you're not pulling hard enough at all, it just will stay still. Um, so let's go ahead and let's mark up some of the, the forces here. Instead of drawing a free body diagram, I'm just gonna draw them on the diagram just to keep it simple. So we're going to say that he's pulling with a force of 1300 newtons straight to the right. I'm going to say that this thing has a weight of, let's say, 4,415 newtons. That works out to be about 450 kilograms. Um, there will be a force of friction opposing the impending slip. So because this guy's pulling it to the right, this if it was going to slip, it would have the tendency to move to the right. So force of friction will be acting to the left, and that's um, obviously equal to mu s times n. Uh, where we should define what mu s is, so we'll say it's 0 0.6. Um, and then the interesting thing about these tipping problems is when, when an object like this vending machine is on the verge of tipping over, it will be in equilibrium. Uh, when saying that it hasn't tipped yet, it will be in equilibrium, and there'll actually be no reaction on this side. So what we could we could potentially have uh, a normal force acting here, and we could also have some normal force acting up through here. But really, when this is on the verge of tipping over, um, this is almost a, this this foot is almost about to lift off the ground, and just like a hair more of a force here would cause it to lift off the ground. So all of the weight basically transfers into this right-hand side to oppose the tip. Uh, and so in this case, we know that our normal force, um, our maximum, really, this is our maximum normal force, would be 4,415 newtons. Now, obviously, if this force isn't big enough to cause this to be sort of at the verge of tipping, then we will still get some amount of force here. Um, but we should, what we should do is we should solve, try and solve for the worst case scenario, uh, and then if it doesn't tip, then we'll know that we're not worried about it tipping anyways. Okay, so with that all said, what we should do is we'll solve for the moments about uh, some point. Um, let's pick, sure, we can just call this point A. Okay, so we're going to say that we'll solve for the moments about point A, we'll say that counterclockwise is the positive sense, and what we want to do is we want to find out if this is equal to zero. Okay, so the moment, what we should also do actually is probably put on some distances here. So we'll say that it's one meter wide, so this will be 0 0.5 meters, and we'll say that the vending machine is 1.5 meters tall, and he's pulling right at the top. Okay, so the moment about point A caused by the weight here will be 4,415 4, newtons times 0 0.5 meters. And we want to figure out if that's equal to the other side. So, uh, so that would be the counterclockwise moment. And the other moment that's opposing that is the guy's force that he's applying. So that is 1,300 newtons times 1.5 meters um, and then we want to check if these are actually equal to each other so and if they're equal to each other that means that the sum of moments is equal to zero so we have uh, 4415 times 0 0.5 that's 2207 2207.5 and, and this side 1300 times 1 1.5 is 1950 and this is Newton meters, and this is Newton meters. So looking at this, these are not equal to each other. We actually have the left-hand side being greater than the right-hand side. So what does that mean? The left-hand side here is the maximum moment, like I said, that we can actually, that can be caused by uh, the weight, sort of the weight of the vending machine uh, about some point A. Um, and so that's 2207.5. The other side, the right-hand side, is the moment that's being caused by the guy pulling on it. So he's actually only applying 1950 newton meters. Um, and this thing, to be on the verge of tipping, could resist up to 2207.5 newton meters. So he's not applying a force that's great enough to actually cause this thing to be on the verge of tipping. So we know that this thing is not going to tip. Okay. 
So let's go now and figure out if the vending machine is going to slip. So we already know it's not going to tip. Uh, we want to figure out if it will slip. So we want to check if the sum of forces in the x direction is equal to zero. So the sum of forces we have 1300 uh, going off in the right direction and opposing that we want to figure out is this all equal to zero so we have 0 0.6 um, times uh, the normal force so we have 4415 and I know you're probably thinking I said that this normal force here is the maximum normal force and because I know that it's actually we're actually we don't need the maximum normal force here that some amount of force will be going through here and a slightly smaller amount than 4415 will be going through here well just because of the distributive properties of that this the sum would still have to be 4415 because of static equilibrium for the sum of forces in the y direction so really we can just still assume here we can simplify this equation by just putting this whole sum of 4,415 instead of putting 0 0.6 times whatever force is going through here time plus 0 0.6 times whatever force is going through here. Okay. Uh, anyways, we just want to check are these guys equal? And I guess I really should have put a question mark there before because that was we weren't sure. Um, well, 1,300. That nothing nothing fancy is happening there. It's still 1,300 and 0 0.6 times 4,415 is 2,649. 26. 49. So obviously the right hand side now is bigger uh, and the units here were actually in newtons and newtons. All right, so what does this mean? Well, this is basically this 1300 newtons is the force that we're applying to the right and this 2649 is the maximum friction force that it can resist to the left, basically just opposite the impending slip. So as long as we don't apply a force that's greater than 1300 newtons, I'm uh, sorry, as long as we don't apply a force that's greater than 2,649 2, newtons, this object, which is our vending machine, will not be able to slip. So by, knowing, by looking at this, we can see that by this guy pulling 1,300 newtons at the very top to the right, the vending machine will not tip and it will not slip. All right, so I guess something else that we can try here is I'll just copy this down here. Um, what if, here we'll change colors, what if the force uh, that he was pulling, actually we'll cross that out, what if we're just saying, what if he was pulling at 1500 newtons instead of 1300 newtons? Well, looking down here we can do all the same stuff, just this number would change to 1500, and then 1500 times 1 1.5, uh, well this would actually just get so on the left-hand side, nothing would change. This would just change to 2250. And then actually, the right-hand side would be bigger. So what this is saying is all things else, all other things held constant. If this guy pulled at 1500 newtons, um, we're actually overcoming the, the, the moment that is able to be caused by the shifting of the weight here. Um, so the, the biggest moment that this can resist is basically 2207.5 newton meters, but he would be applying 2250 newton meters, and so that would actually cause the, the vending machine to tip over and probably land on the guy. Um, thinking about whether or not it would slip, um, well, we would have to change this to 1500, right? Because we're, that was just 1300, now it's 1500. Uh, this down here would change to 1500. All other things would stay the same. 1500 is still smaller than 2649, uh, and so as long as we're not exceeding 2649, we can't actually cause this object to slip. So if he was to pull at 1500 newtons, the, the vending machine would tip, and it would not slip. It would just fall on him. Uh, but if he was pulling at 1300 newtons in the same, exact same orientation and height, uh, it wouldn't move at all. So. There you go. Hopefully that clears up a little bit of an example on using friction and moments at the same time in the same problem.